Okay, a place along the way, family. It is Psalm 8 day. All right, let's get to it. Book 1, Psalm 8. It is called The Glory of the Lord in Creation to the Chief Musician on the Instrument of Gath. Does anybody have any idea what the instrument of Gath is? I have never looked it up. Uh, share in the comments below if you know or if you look it up. And it is a Psalm of David. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him for you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands you have put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. All right, let's see what notes my study Bible has. Okay, so for verses one through nine, it says, this Psalm of David, is a nature psalm showing the light showing the littleness of physical man and the greatness of God although man is minuscule in relation to the immense universe he is nonetheless the principle of creation sorry the pinnacle of creation and the object of God's watchful care verse 1 Lord, our Lord. This is the personal name of God combined with the title meaning Master, Sovereign. Verse 2, Babes. Jesus plucked the first phrase of this verse and used it to justify young people praising him as Messiah. Matthew 21, 16. The Septuagint, which we've talked about in the introduction, or Greek Bible from which Jesus quoted, considered the Hebrew word here rendered strength to be better translated praise. Verse three, heavens. No scientific discovery by astronomer, verse three, or biologist, verses seven and eight, negates the unique significance and value of human beings as created beings. Verse four, man, son of man. Hebrew Enosh ben Adam, man in weakness, man in origin, that is from earth. Son of man is a title applied to the Messiah in the New Testament and the author of Hebrews applied this passage to Jesus specifically. Hebrew 2 6 as did Paul in 1 Corinthians 1527 verse 5 human beings were made a little lower than the angels not involved a little it says not oh not evolved a little high a little gosh so human beings were made a little lower than the angels we were not evolved a little higher than apes there is a distinct separateness of man and animal angels Hebrew Elohim. Angels is Elohim? Oh. Angels Hebrew Elohim. Okay. I don't I didn't know that. I thought that referred to God. It's using the Old Testament to mean oh okay. I got it. Okay. So it says angels. Hebrew El Elohim is used in the Old Testament to mean God, gods, or supernatural beings. The Greek Septuagint translates it as angels as does the author of Hebrews Hebrews 2 7 
And then verse 8 for dominion. This parallels the description of the first Adam in Genesis 1, 26 and 28. And let's see if there are other notes. You have a couple other notes in here. Um, for Strong's Concordance, it has honor, which is Adar, H-A-D-A-R in Hebrew. Strong's number 1926. Splendor, honor, glory, adornment, magnificence, beauty. This noun comes from the verb H-A-D-A-R, Adar, to honor, to glorify, to make splendid. Hadar speaks of the splendor that belongs to God, to his creation, to his kingdom, and to man made in God's image. The biblical view of man is higher and more worth affirming than any of the alternate views. In this reference, God has actually crowned man with splendor in spite of his smallness relative to the vast heavens. Another well-known use of Hadar is in the phrase, the beauty of holiness, which is um, Psalm 96, 9 and 110, 3. The splendor of holiness is a greater beauty than even the glory of nature. And then one more note is for man's dominion over creation for verses 4 through 8. Human worth. Not only was man intrinsically distinct from the rest of creation, he was given authority over the earth and everything upon it. Man was made to rule. Verse 6. Our ability to exercise authority over the earth is dependent on our willingness to submit, to serve, to submit to, serve, and obey the loving God who holds authority over us. Our authority over the earth makes us accountable for the earth. The mineral resources of the earth, the earth's water and air, the species of animal life beneath and upon the earth, and in the waters of the earth should all be the concern of every government and individual. Can we allow to pass from the earth forms of life which the Creator has placed here and committed to our care? Do we dare to pollute and corrupt God's creation? For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. Luke 12. 48 and also it has under there Genesis 1 26 through 28 and Genesis 3 17. All right, you guys, that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a blessed, blessed day.